Let's first review the similar triangles that we learned in geometry. Say there is a triangle, and the three angles are known as A, B, and C in capital letters, and the three opposite sides are known as A, B, and C in small letters. And there's another triangle. The three angles are known as D, E, and F again in capital letters. And again, the three corresponding opposite sides are known as D E F in small letters. Now, if angle A equals to angle D, and angle B equals to angle E, in other words, if the two angles in the first triangle equal to the two angles in the second triangle, then since the three angles of a triangle add up to 180 degree. Then angle C must also equal to angle F. So these two triangles have the same angles, and they are known as similar triangles, denoted by this symbol right here. And if they are similar triangles, there are certain properties. The most important property is that the ratio of any two corresponding sides in the first and second triangle must always be the same. In other words. The ratio of A and D equals to the ratio between B and E, and that equals to the ratio between C and F. Also, the ratio of any two sides in the first triangle must equal to the ratio of the two corresponding sides in the second triangle. For example, the ratio between A and B, both the sides are within the first triangle, must equals to the ratio between D and E. The Two corresponding sides in the second triangle. The ratio between C and A must equal to the ratio between F and D, etc. So, if you recall the unit circle definition for trigonometry that we learned already, on this unit circle we can draw a right triangle of angle theta with the three sides x, y, and one. Now. If I pick an arbitrary point on the terminal side of this angle theta, and this new point has coordinates of x prime, y prime, I can again draw another right triangle of angle theta, and this right triangle has sides x prime and y prime, and the hypotenuse side is the perpendicular distance from this point to the origin, and this is r prime. So if we look at these two right triangles. The first one with the three sides x, y, and one. The second one with the three sides x prime, y prime, and r prime. We notice that they are similar triangles because they have all three angles that are the same. Therefore, based on the similar triangle property that we mentioned earlier, the ratio between y prime and r prime must equal to y over one, and this is simply y. And based on the unit circle definition for trigonometry, this is sine theta. Also, the ratio between x prime and r prime must equal to x over one, which simply equals to x. And again, based on the unit circle definition for trigonometry, this is cosine theta. Therefore, based on this analysis, it enables us to come up with a more general definition for trigonometry. And since x prime and y prime will always have the same signs, positive or negative, as x and y, so this definition can be extended to the other quadrants as well. Now let's look at the general definition for trigonometry that can be used to find the trigonometric function values for any angle. So for angle theta, again, we draw it in its standard position, and on its terminal side. If there's a point with coordinates x and y, we can find the distance from this point to the origin r. R is found through the distance formula, square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, x and y being the coordinates, they can be either positive or negative or zero depending on where the point is. However, since r is a distance, it is always positive. Through these, we can define the six trigonometric functions for angle theta. Sine theta is y over r. Cosine theta is x over r. Tangent theta again is sine theta over cosine theta. Therefore, it is y over x. 
cosecant theta is again the reciprocal of sine theta, therefore it is r over y. Secant theta is again the reciprocal of cosine theta, therefore it is r over x. And lastly, cotangent theta is the reciprocal of tangent theta, therefore it is x over y. If the terminal side of our angle theta falls in the first quadrant, then for any point on this terminal side, it will have both positive x and y coordinates. And since r is a distance, it is always positive, therefore sine theta being y over r is positive, cosine theta being x over r is also positive, changing theta being sine theta over cosine theta also positive. Same thing for cosecant theta, secant theta, and cotangent theta. In other words, if an angle has a terminal side that falls in the first quadrant, it's all six trigonometric function values are positive. If the terminal side of our angle theta falls in the second quadrant, then we know that the x coordinate now is negative, but y coordinate is positive. Therefore, since sine theta is y over r, it is still positive but cosine theta is x over r, and since x is negative, but r, again, being a distance, is always positive, therefore cosine theta will be negative. And tangent theta is the ratio between sine theta and cosine theta, therefore it is now negative. And then again, cosecant theta is the reciprocal of sine theta, it has the same sign as sine theta, positive again, Secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine theta. It has the same sign as cosine theta, so negative. Same thing with cotangent theta, which is negative again. Then, if the terminal side of our angle theta is in the third quadrant, then for both x and y coordinates, they are both negative. Therefore, sine theta is negative, cosine theta is negative, Tangent theta now being the ratio of two negative values is positive. Then again, cosecant, secant, and cotangent are the reciprocal functions of the previous three. Therefore, they will have the same signs as the previous three. Lastly, for our angle theta, if its terminal side is in the fourth quadrant, then x is positive but y is negative. Therefore, sine theta is negative, Cosine theta is positive now, tangent theta being the ratio of one positive and one negative value is negative. And then again, cosecant, secant, and cotangent are the reciprocal functions of the previous three. They have the same signs as the previous three, negative, positive, and negative. And as a summary, for the first quadrant, sine, cosine, tangent, and the other three cosecant, secant, and cotangent, all six trigonometric function values are all positive. Quadrant two, sine is positive, cosine and tangent are both negative, and the other three reciprocal functions will have the same signs as these three. Quadrant three, sine is negative, cosine is negative, but tangent now is positive. Lastly, for quadrant four, sine is negative, cosine is positive, and then tangent is negative. And this summary is very useful to determine the trigonometric function values of a given angle based on the location of its terminal side. Let's apply the general definition of trigonometry that we just learned to this example. For a given angle theta in its standard position, a point on its terminal side is negative 4, negative 3. And we need to determine sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta. So let's first use this given information to plot this angle. So in our coordinate system, we plot the point negative 4, negative 3. Negative 4 is the x coordinate, negative 3 is the y coordinate. And since this point is on the terminal side of an angle theta, we can sketch our angle to be like this. So now we can determine the distance from this point to the origin by the distance formula, substitute in the values. We can decide that r equals to 5. Therefore, according to the definition, sine theta is y over r. Therefore, y is negative 3, r is positive 5. Sine theta equals to 
negative 3 over 5. For cosine theta, by definition, it equals to x over r. x is negative 4. r is, again, 5. Therefore, cosine theta is negative 4 over 5. Lastly, tangent theta. It's easier to remember that tangent theta is a sine over cosine. Therefore, it is y over x. Therefore, it equals to positive 3 over 4. And that completes this problem. However, you might argue, how do you know this is angle theta? We only know that there's a point on the terminal side of this angle. What if the angle looked like this, being a negative angle? Or this could be our angle theta. That's correct. All these three can represent angle theta. But that does not change the answer of this problem, because they are coterminal angles, if you still remember. And coterminal angles will have the same trigonometric function values. Let's look at another example. For angle theta in its standard position, a point on its terminal side is negative 3, 1. And we need to determine secant theta, cosecant theta, and tangent theta. Now, these three trigonometric functions are not as familiar as the other three, but that's OK as long as we know that these are the reciprocal functions of cosine theta, sine theta, and tangent theta, respectively. We can use that knowledge to find these functions. So again, we start with sketching the angle. In our coordinate system, we plot this point, negative 3, 1. Again, negative 3 is our x coordinate, and 1 is our y coordinate. And this point is on the terminal side of our angle. Therefore, we can sketch this angle. And this represents our angle theta. Once again, angle theta does not have to look like this. This is only one of infinite number of coterminal angles that have the same terminal side. However, since, again, coterminal angles have the same trigonometric function values, we just pick the most convenient one to do our calculation. And now we need to determine the distance from this point to the origin by the distance formula, substituting the values. r equals to square root of 10. Again, it's a distance. It's always positive. So to determine secant theta, recognize that it is 1 over cosine. And since cosine theta is x over r, therefore secant theta is r over x. And r is the square root of 10. x is negative 3. Therefore, secant theta is negative square root of 10 over 3. For cosecant theta, recognize that it is 1 over sine theta. Therefore, it is r over y. r, again, is the square root of 10. y is 1. Therefore, cosecant theta is simply square root of 10. Lastly, cotangent theta is 1 over tangent theta. Therefore, it is x over y. Again, x is negative 3. y is 1. Therefore, cotangent theta is negative 3.